Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Pauline Schuckmark, Jr., host for We Like the 1%. We Like the 1% focuses on individuals and entrepreneurs, and today we're continuing our discussion with Anil Kumar, senior trader with ProFX Options. Aloha, Anil. There you are again. Aloha, Pauline. Love to be back. Great. Now, yesterday we went into the basics of Bitcoin and the basics of trading cryptocurrencies along with fiat currencies. So we're going to carry on further today because this is the show for individuals and entrepreneurs and you and your team at ProFX Options are entrepreneurs and innovators, in fact, in cryptocurrency trading. So would you like to tell the viewers and listeners here at Think Tech Hawaii a little bit about why you started ProFX Options? Uh, yes, Pauline, it's a, it's a really interesting story because um, I've been teaching people how to trade uh, different asset classes for many, many years. But the one reoccurring thing was that actually people don't really want to learn how to trade, they want to learn how to make money. And there's a very, very distinct difference. So uh, with my business partner, Oksana, we created a company that would fast track people in their learning um, to trade any asset class, whether it's foreign uh, uh, FX or whether it's futures or whether it's cryptocurrencies. And we systemize um, uh, our trading to fast track people who want to learn as quickly as possible. And it's great to see the transformation from people who have never ever traded before to a point where they can start making consistent profits with the right guidance, with the right tools, with the right uh, 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 you know, trader coach, basically. I think these are all very important elements. And you focus primarily on cryptocurrency trading, which is the fiat currency pairs, such as pound yen, pound dollar, like we discussed yesterday. And you also used to concentrate quite a lot on binary options, but not so much nowadays. And why is that, Anil? Well, binary options are actually a great product because they're the easiest um, uh, instrument to learn. But I think uh, regulations across the world have kind of um, don't particularly like that particular instrument class. So we're really primarily focused on, on fiat currencies and cryptocurrencies um, because they both still have that same exciting element where they have enough volatility for. Uh, individuals to you know, make money once they know what they're doing. And the cryptocurrency aspect is particularly exciting because it is relatively new. And you and Oksana and Aaron teach uh, classes on how to trade cryptocurrencies. Is that correct? Yes, we do. We hold regular workshops and regular classes in London. So if any of your viewers are on holiday in London, we would love to see you. We'd love to uh, meet you and, uh, yes, and show uh, you what we do. Yes, Oahu is the gathering place, so we have lots of international tourists here, lots of Brits, lots of Aussies, lots of Kiwis, and everybody from everywhere comes to Waikiki especially, that's the resort area. So um, for people who would be interested in taking your classes, how can they get in contact with you? Do you have a website or a Facebook they can link up with? Yes, absolutely. Um, if you Google uh, profxoptions.com, that's our uh, uh, website. We have a Facebook, we have Twitter. Uh, and we would be happy to hear from you. And if you are interested in trading, we'll give you uh, guidance on the best approach, uh, not only in terms of which asset class to trade, but you know expectations and, and the three main tools that you need. You need a strategy, you need risk management, you need psychology. Um, they're the three tools you're going to need to become consistently profitable. And that's what we teach on our workshops and courses. And Anil, can anybody sign up for your classes? Anybody of any nationality? Or are there certain restrictions? Yes, um, it does. It does depend because uh, opening an account um, has to comply with your local regulations. So um, depending on the jurisdiction you come from, you will have brokers that are regulated in your jurisdiction. So we always recommend uh, checking with your, you know, with your advisors to make sure that you're able to open an account in that jurisdiction. But certainly if you come to London, um, you know, there, there are lots of uh, brokerages and lots of houses which can facilitate that. But always, I always suggest to people from different uh, jurisdictions to check with their own regulations first. And it, it's probably a very good idea to take a class in trading as opposed to just going at it a uh, blank slate because it looks simple, but there are a lot of things people need to learn about trading. Otherwise, you might as well just go into a casino. Is that correct? 
Excellent. Actually, I use the analogy of driving a car. Um, if I gave you the keys to my car and you've never ever driven before, the probability of getting from A to B is massively reduced because you don't know. But if I sat next to you and said, here's first, here's the gears, here's the indicator, you look in your mirror, then it massively increases your probability of success of getting from A to B. And training is exactly the same. You, know, you need somebody to show you where the gears are, where the indicators are, where the, uh, the dangers are, and where you should be heading. So it's, a, it's a, an analogy I use all the time. So I would never recommend anybody getting into a car that hasn't had any lessons. And I would never recommend anybody to begin trading without having lessons. Yes, because it can be very, very dangerous. And we don't want people to lose money. We want them to make money off trading. And there are certain um, ways you can minimize your risk when you've had a class. Now, in terms of your own teaching style and that of your colleagues, Oksana and Aaron, uh, what makes your classes unique and how long do they last? What do people have to look forward to? Yes, yeah, so we, we, we kind of tailor it to an individual's expectations and their long-term focus and goal. Uh, we start with a very, very simple uh, free workshop, and then we um, step them up to a two-day um, course where we uh, teach them the basics and then teach them how to use some of our unique trading strategies, which they can only access by our classes. Um, we do online courses as well, but we also have mentorship programs where people who are very serious about trading can be with them for six months or 12 months to guide them through you know, the, the, the hoops, basically. And we, we love doing it because we've had so many students who we've transformed their lives in terms of, um, you know, had a, a job, a nine to five, uh, not meeting their expectations. And we um, help them and guide them to really open up an, an amazing industry, which is, you know, trading, whether any asset class, because if you get it right, it gives you the freedom to basically do whatever you want. And that's, I think we've seen that time and time with our students. If you go on our website, there's some testimonials from our students, which uh, will attest to that. And, we, and Oksana and myself really enjoy that, that whole process with people. And it's a very small team and it's very personalized. So each individual student gets attention. Is that how it works generally? Yes. I mean, we, we just had a class actually uh, this last weekend and we took live trades actually on our course. People have never ever traded before and all of them had winning trades. And that's posted on our Facebook. If you want to have a look at the trade we took with our students who've never traded before. Um, using our unique strategies, our unique systems, uh, it, it kind of, it, you said it actually perfectly. It's simple, but it's not easy. And I think you said it perfectly. And one of the things you focus on, particularly Oksana, uh, is the psychology within trading, because this is something that is sometimes overlooked. Uh, what's very fashionable, especially if people go into the relevant event bright in their city, is that there are a lot of Forex traders and so-called companies and so-called experienced traders running these free workshops and then asking for extortion amounts of money to learn from them how to trade uh, when they are not experienced traders unlike yourself and Oksana and Aaron. And the danger here is that they're giving, uh, they're being given an illusion. It's like these get rich quick, learn Forex. And this is not correct. You don't get rich quick with Forex. You have to know what you're doing. And what you focus on is particular aspects of psychology that help traders control their impulses in trading. Is that correct? Absolutely. Well, trading, actually, um, uh, and any time money is at risk, we have uncertainty. Trading is uncertainty. Nobody knows what's going to happen next in the markets. So it induces chemicals in our brain of fear and greed. It's a common term that's used. But whenever, um, particularly somebody who's never traded before, they, put, they place their first trades, the uncertainty brings a lot of fear. And that fear affects the chemistry in our brains which affect our decision making. And what we do, to, what we teach and with Oksana teaching the psychology part of our, our courses is how to control your emotions. Mm. Because when you enter the trade, you obviously enter the trade with a system, a rule-based strategy. And that should be followed through regardless, and to, uh, regardless of what is happening next. Uh, and I think um, 
people who can be able to understand how to control uh, their emotions are infinitely more successful than those who can't. It's a definitely a, something we teach, and we spend a lot of time teaching on that. And I think um, uh, we don't have enough time to go into alpha, theta waves, <laughs> which uh, can actually enhance your pro uh, progress and your performance by managing those, those those waves in the brain, basically. We don't have time to talk about that, but so we spend a lot of time. Okay, n next time, Anil. But the basis of all this psychology is your linguistic programming, is that correct? Yes, I mean, uh, Sana spends a lot of time in uh, uh, in, in what, how we talk to ourselves, um, and you know how the positive affirmations, how uh, having belief in yourself, having an understanding that uh, you know uh, managing greed and fear are integral to success. You know, trading isn't just about is the market going up or down. It's how you as an individual control your emotions while you're in the trade. And uh, we see transformations. We not only see transformations in trading, but actually the way that they, they approach um, you know, uh, their lives, actually. Because once you manage and handle your psychology, it can affect you in all sorts of different, uh, spheres of your life. And among the classes that you teach, which is more popular? Uh, is it the fiat currency trading, the FX, or is it now the cryptocurrency trading? Which one That's seems... a really interesting question yeah. because up until August of last year, fiat currency was the main asset class. But with the explosion of media coverage of um, uh, cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, uh, there's been a massive surge in interest because people have seen the tremendous increase in percentage that people have um, talked about in terms of their account, the, the, the price of Bitcoin. So people want to you know, find out. But again, like any type of trading, you know, you need the knowledge before you just jump in and buy a Bitcoin or buy a Ethereum or buy Ripple. You have to know what you're doing. It's the same car analogy that we talked about earlier that you know, don't just jump into a cryptocurrency car without knowing how to drive it. So the very first thing people have to do is have a wallet, is that correct? Yes, okay, so you know, we touched upon it yesterday very briefly. There are three problems that you have to solve. One is where to buy safely, where to store safely, and where to trade safely. And all these things are, are kind of unique and different to fiat currencies. So the wallet is a very important aspect of holding cryptocurrencies because as we discussed briefly yesterday, but cryptocurrency is nothing more than a digital asset. And the storage of that digital asset is critical. Whether you store it online or offline can make the difference actually. And, and we encourage all our students to keep their digital assets offline mm -hmm. by utilizing a hard wallet or a cold story wallet. Um, again, uh, these are things you need to understand before diving into cryptocurrencies. You know, you need to know how, where to buy safely, where to store, whether it's online or offline, and how to trade. And you mentioned cold storage, Anil. This is in reference to the small box uh, manufactured by Trezor. Is that the company who makes these small physical yes. devices? There are a number of manufacturers of cold storage. Um, but what, like everything, um, what is actually interesting in the cryptocurrency sphere? On the face, it's very techy. So the way, even the way that they have the trezor and the way that it's managed and how you set it up and how you store your currency, you need to be shown how to do it. And I think that's one of the things we noticed very early on is that people didn't know how to perform these functions. So we spent a lot of time in our workshops showing you demonstrations of how A, to buy cryptocurrency, B, to uh, install your trezor, to keep your trezor safe, and also then how to trade it on the exchanges and take it off the exchange when you're no longer trading. So all very critical elements in trading cryptocurrencies. And uh, some people, again, jump into this car without knowing how to drive it, and that can cause problems. We, we suggest learn how to drive uh, in, the, in the cryptocurrency concept. And these workshops are typically one or two days, is that right? Cryptocurrency ones are two days, I believe, or you've... Yeah, cryptocurrency is that we want to give you a background of what cryptocurrency is, what blockchain is, um, and uh, you know, the, um, where, to, where best to go to get uh, you know, the best information, because we do understand, and everyone should understand, at the moment it's regulated. Okay, wonderful, Anil. We're just going to take a very quick break, and then we'll continue with uh, your trademark items in ProFX Option, the Algo Options and ProFX Thrust, after this quick break. developments which I'll tell you about. Sure. Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. 
Law Across the Sea comes on every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join us. I like to bring in guests that talk about all types of things that come across the sea to Hawaii. Not just law, love, people, ideas, history. Please join us for Law Across the Sea. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Winston Welch, and every other Monday at 3 p.m., you can join me at Out and About, a show where we explore a variety of topics, organizations, events, and the people who fuel them in our city, state, country, and world. So please join us every other Monday at 3, and we'll see you then. Aloha. Aloha and welcome back everybody. We're speaking with Anil Kumar of ProFX Options here on We Like the 1%. So now we're going to get into the fun part of your trading style at ProFX Options. Every company, every trader has their different quirks and different inventions on how to predict what's going to happen, how they can place the best possible trades they can. And you've got your own, haven't you, Anil? So you've got two trademark concepts that are attached to, to your company, ProFX Options. One of them is algo options. So do you want to go into the algorithmic trading now? Absolutely. So I, as I mentioned yesterday, I've been trading for 20 years. And I learned very, very early on that markets move in patterns. And as an engineer, as a mathematician, I started to look at these patterns to see if I could actually program, program them mathematically, algorithmically. And over many, many years, we've developed strategies and systems to help us identify the probability of the market going up or down. And we're very proud to uh, you know, offer to our students our own algorithmic um, algo options and thrust and a scanner that we've recently developed, which helps new students to look for opportunities using mathematics, using our algorithms to help them and guide them on placing trades, so we're very excited about that. Uh, and the way that they function basically is they make it very visual. Um, on, a, on a chart, for example, it colors the bars magenta and blue, and it tells you the zones that you should be trading in, and a scanner will look for opportunities across the marketplace and present them for further analysis by, by yourself. Okay, so this is quite an advantage compared to when, for example, I used to trade 20 years ago like you. We had to use something like Japanese candlestick charting, and there was no yes. computer or algorithm to track the patterns. We had to find the patterns ourselves. And it operates a little bit like Japanese candlestick charting in the sense that Japanese candlestick charts are red and green. So green for yes, it's going to go up, and red for down. So you had to memorize certain patterns that Homa came up with, like shooting star, or the three soldiers, or three crows. And this would give an indication as to which way you should be placing your trades. Now, you, now that you've got the algorithms, I'm very jealous because that, that speeds things up a little bit. It makes trading and crypto cra uh, trading more accessible to larger amounts of the population. Is that right? That's exactly right. You get, you get the perfect example where different Japanese candlestick patterns are used as a probability prediction on whether the market's going up or down. But those patterns, actually, you can put maths behind them. So we looked at these Japanese candlestick patterns and movements and put numbers to them, put uh, formulae to them. And all we've done, really, is put them into an algorithmic system. So rather than you having to look for these patterns, the software looks for them and looks, um, you know, looks at them for you, and then to give you an indication uh, that this the probability is the market's going to go up or down. So we're, we're, you know, we've done the hard work for you and makes it a little bit simpler for you. And why did you pick the particular colors, magenta and gray and blue, for instead of red and green? Did you just want to be different from the Japanese candlestick charting? No, not at all. Actually, um, you, you've touched on a very, very important element. Markets, regardless of what they are, either are moving in an uptrend, a downtrend, or they're going sideways. So we decided that uh, when the market's going sideways, we don't really want to trade. So we col we colored the candlesticks or bars gray, um, blue for when markets are going up, and magenta, we didn't want to confuse it with red, so magenta was the closest color. So that's the kind of story between hmm. magenta and dark blue. But gray is the important one because there are times when you should not trade. Yes. And that is just as important as multi-trade. And what does ProFX Thrust do? 
to help in okay, so the trust is a very important, important element in trading because um, whilst markets are moving they sometimes are energetic they move in speed sometimes they're lethargic and they don't move very much so obviously when we're trading we really want to make sure that the market has some movement some momentum some thrust that is the best time to place trade so our proprietary algorithms is seeking out these, these times when markets are going to be moving and it gives an indication to the user that they, that's a good probability of taking a trade. And when they see the magenta, that's a good time to buy, is that right? So the blue is a good time to buy. Oh, sorry. The magenta yes. is a good time to sell. That's right. So it's not confused with red. <laughs> it's a little bit more positive <laughs> than red. <laughs> now, when people take your classes, Anil, um, do you focus on, when you're starting somebody out on cryptocurrency trading, do you start with the USD BTC pair? Is that what you focus on? Or do you go straight into BTC against Ethereum ETH? Okay, so it is important which currency pair that you, that you trade. And the most liquid ones that we, that we suggest you start with, you know, the, the, the Bitcoin. And whether it's against fiat currency or against uh, another um, uh, cryptocurrency, it's kind of of irrelevant in a way for us mm -hmm. because predominantly people will be trading Bitcoin against US dollar or Ethereum against US dollar. We also have strategy and we also have the ability to trade against cryptocurrency against cryptocurrency. And for us as traders, we don't really mind what we trade. Um, and it doesn't have to be a fiat currency. We want movement. We want patterns. We want the ability to use predictive mathematics. I'm, to. I'm just asking that, Anil, because uh, if you want movement, especially for FX, the normal fiat pairs, because you run classes on that as well, the one that has one of the highest volatility, which was my one of my favorite pairs, was pound yen. So the British yes. pound against the Japanese yen. So yes. it's it's volatile, but if you place the trades correctly, it can be very lucrative because it moves. That pair moves. There's a larger spread, but it moves. Again, you, you touched exactly on the right topic. Traders do not want markets that go sideways or flat. We want volatility. The more volatility, the more potential for profit. Also, more potential for risk. But you know, risk and reward has to be measured. It has to be uh, um, uh, 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 properly handled, if you know what I mean. So cryptocurrencies are much more volatile. And the currency pair that you just mentioned has a similar kind of volatility. Yeah. Not quite, of course. Yes. But, uh, as traders, we want volatility. And tell me about Scanner. This, I've, this is the first time I'm hearing about Scanner. I knew about your algorithmic uh, this trademark. This is new. Yeah. This is brand new news. Um, we're launching a new product, which is called a Scanner. So where um, you know you're just looking at one currency pair, your your focus and energy is on that one currency pair. But in the meantime, there may be other currency pairs that are moving and have much more probability of success. So a Scanner will look across. 10, 20, 30 cryptocurrencies simultaneously and present the best opportunities with the scanner. And we're going to be, we're going to be launching that very, very soon. Um, and you know, we'll be happy to uh, demonstrate that to you next time. Okay. And you've also, are you still mining? Is that an activity you're still engaged with at ProFX Options? Yeah, it, it's, it, we, we did it more as a, um, a, a point of interest. When we started getting involved in cryptocurrencies uh, you know, 18 months ago, 14 months ago, we wanted to understand what it was all about. And we wanted to understand the blockchain. We wanted to understand the mining. Just like driving the car, right? We wanted to understand what's under the hood. We wanted to look in the engine. We wanted to build the engine. So we, put, we built a mining rig, which uh, mines Ethereum. But it was more from a, a, a hobbyist, intrigue point, a, a intriguing point of view. But we learned so much from that process, and uh, and we have it in our office. So it's, it's mining away. And because of that mining activity, you are engaged in your own exchange. Is that correct? Yes. So as I said to you, when we when we decided to get into cryptocurrencies, we wanted to see the areas that we have expertise in. So trading, obviously, was our main expertise. The mining was more of a hobby and interest. But we also partnered with a, uh, an exchange because we didn't like the kind of crypto exchange that we were coming up and we didn't really want to uh, recommend clients to exchange that we weren't happy with. So we've partnered with a, an exchange which will provide high-frequency trading, will provide security, provide a, a, a regulatory framework 
in, a, in an FCA sandbox, which I won't go into, but it means that we, <laughs> we don't have time away. for that any longer. <laughs> uh, uh, and I. I just wanted to ask about your classes, because I know this from Oksana, that uh, generally speaking, okay, each trader has their own quirks and their own personality and their own way of trading, as long as they follow the rules, that, the basic guidelines that you're teaching them. Mm -hmm. In general, would you say men or women make better traders? Oh, this is a contentious issue, by the way. You touch <laughs> on a really contentious issue. Uh, and you're going to put me in trouble, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, generally yeah. speaking, Anil, there's a difference between general and universal, right? So generally, mm -hmm. in your experience, in your observation with Oksana, because she, she's your partner and uh, your business partner. She's a, she's a great trader. Yeah. Um, and I discovered this, and, and I think it's widely kind of known, but maybe not widely known. But actually, ladies, women make better traders because they're a bit more... Um, uh, uh, focused, hmm. and they, uh, unlike men who have egos and uh, you know demand to be right, hmm. I think ladies and women tend to be more pragmatic. And and here's the controversial part: when I'm teaching a, a lady or woman, kind of do what they're told. Yes, Please yes. Don't yes, no, that. that's fine. No, I want. I was trying to tease that out of you because that's exactly why. Um, because <laughs> men have the, sometimes the tendency to be higher risk takers, especially yes. in things like trading. Um, and extreme sports and all that sort of thing. Uh, and yes. uh, they, they also sort of go for it uh, uh, more impulsive sometimes, whereas females, they're a little bit more passive in their personalities. Just generally speaking, okay, I'm talking about large segments of the population, not individual persons, of course. Um, so, th and they're more pliable. So one of the things that are important in education is if the person is being re receptive as opposed to rebellious. Because in something like trading, whether it's fiat currency or cryptocurrency, you really do have to follow uh, the instructions of the tutor. Is that right? You can't just do anything in the beginning. You can get more creative once you see what it's like. But like with anything, it's very important to stick to the basic guidelines that you're teaching with uh, you and Oksana and Aaron are teaching in the classes. Is that right? The way, the way our formula is very, very simple. It's a rule-based strategy. And therefore, if you follow the rules, you have a high probability of success than if you don't follow the rules. And I think uh, men tend to create new rules and create their own version of the rules, whereas, um, you know, women tend to be, okay, tell me what the rules are, let me follow them. And, and I, don't, I mean that in the most respectful way that I can. <laughs> That's all right. You don't have to be politically correct. It's, it's, a, it's a trait that's important for this particular context. So yes, yes, the yes. other reason I bring it up is that actually in Japan, it, was, it, it still is to some extent quite trendy for the Japanese housewife to trade. And that's not something Western women generally do as a hobby, right? There is a whole phenomenon. That, that there is even a term, Japanese housewives trade. Yeah. Um, they make up a, a big portion of the retail trading sector. Uh, and because they can do it part time, they can do it around their lifestyle. Because remember, with trading and currency trading, if it's 24 7, you will always be able to find one or two hours in the day to trade. And I think that's what they do. I, I, I always admire them. Wonderful, Anil. So thank you for joining us uh, again. Uh, this is the conclusion of the two part we did on cryptocurrency trading. And we look forward to having you again at some point. And I'll see you in London at some point as well, along with Oksana and Aaron. And for the, everybody in Hawaii, I'll see you next week, next Thursday at 11 AM, for We Like the 1%.